somebody was leaking a lot of Destiny 2 future content last year. And going back to the early part of last year, you may remember a lot of news outlets talking about giant Destiny 2 leaks, which were also referred to as the notepad or paste bin leaks, which apparently were all part of the same thing and were coming from the same source. And in the video today, we're going to look back at some of the leaks that we had last year, especially the stuff related to Witch Queen, with a view to look at some of the key things that were spoken about in the leaks and whether they turned out to be true. And it's safe to say a lot of it did turn out to be correct. And looking back, the leaks started out with information about content we'd see in Season 13 and 14, and that's where we previously heard that weapons like Hawkmoon would return, and that we'd get an exotic mission on an abandoned Cabal ghost ship, which was all stuff that turned out to be correct. And then those leaks also included information about the Bungie 30th Anniversary Pack, the game modes, but also exotic weapons that Bungie wanted to return from Halo, which of course we did see in one form or another, although they turned out to be Halo-inspired weapons. Nonetheless, these leaks certainly appeared to give an insight into early development plans for a lot of the content we've had over the past few months. So. On Rentry.org forward slash leaks, Destiny Leaks does have a breakdown of all of the text that was revealed. And so starting out, the leak initially spoke about New Hive called Lucent Lieutenants. And it referred to them having full subclasses and knights getting Sentinel Shield, for example, as well as Suppressor Nades and Barricades. But it also pointed out the fact that Hive Ghosts would factor into gameplay and that they'd have their own gameplay quirks similar to Splicer Enemies, which arguably came in the format of the moss that chases down. Very interestingly, though, it also had a lot of correct information about the Witch Queen campaign, so it said that it would be eight missions long and five of them would be of presage quality or higher. Then it gave an overview of the first mission for Witch Queen, and this actually came out before the trailer that revealed that kind of story element for the game. And it said that we go to Mars, which was stuck in a past, present, and future rift, and then coming up the peak of the hill, we'd see a dreadnought for the first time, which referenced Sabathon's ship. It also said that Keitel's fleet would be fighting the Hive in the skybox. And of course there are Cabal fighting the Hive, I'm not sure if they are specifically Keitel's legions, although Keitel and the Cabal have played a key role in the season alongside Witch Queen, and so obviously that was an early intention. And it went on to say that working with Akora Ray, we'd launch ourselves with a man cannon onto the ship, and this is where we'd fight a Hive Guardian for the first time, before finding a portal to Savathun's throne world. And all of that, of course, turned out to be frighteningly correct. In terms of some gameplay things, though, it said Savathun tricks us into giving her memories back using Deep Sight, and it referenced after defeating Savathun in the campaign that she'd tell us the Witness is coming, as well as the Witness revealing itself, which arguably happened in the post-campaign cutscene. And it also said at the end of the campaign, the Pyramid Ship will activate, starting the Road to the Raid. And this is where, interestingly, there were even raid spoilers in these leaks many months before it dropped. And it said that Savathun wouldn't be the final boss, nor would Zivu Arath or Quiria, and that the raid would take place on a broken down pyramid in Savathun's throne world. Some of these little bits of information we can see that it didn't get correct as well. It referenced Hive or Taken as the main enemy of the raid, but we got Scorn and Taken. Then it said that the final boss would be darkness based, likely the envoy of the Witness. And Disciple of the Witness is essentially what we got. So again, there was a lot of stuff that was very correct there. And then there are a few more mixed bits of information from these leaks. So it referenced weapons being at their memory limit right now due to Masterworks generating orbs. And the fact that Bungie would remove this aspect of Masterworking for Witch Queen, with the view to make armor mods that fulfill the same purpose. And then it referenced 34 new weapons versus 14 weapons that we had in Beyond Light. And the interesting thing about this is that if you factor the raid weapons as well as the Savathun's throne world weapons and the seasonal weapons. With the key exotics for the release, it takes us roughly to that number. And then of course, Bungie added a whole bunch of world drops and things like that, which weren't specifically tied to the expansion. So it looks like there was even some truth in that. In general though, it said that Witch Queen would have a similar level of secrets as Taken King. It did reference also new ultimate ornaments, which said think snazzier exotic ornaments. And that hasn't quite happened, although we did see the release of Mementos, which had that custom shader to legendary weapons and arguably is a sort of similar concept. Plus, before we had the information, it said that Forsaken would go free to play, but then subsequently be vaulted with Lightfall. And instead, as we saw, Bungie opted to vault it immediately with the launch of Witch Queen, but it did go free to play for that small window after the anniversary pack. Plus, it referenced Glaives becoming available through weapon crafting, a new tincture-esque mechanic called Deep Sight, which is learned during the campaign and used to root out Savathun's memories, as well as tying into the weapon crafting system. And of course, we know that that Deep Sight mechanic and Deep Sight chests as well as Deep Sight Resonance, which didn't quite have the correlation that this would suggest, but all use that same Deep Sight term, right? And as we saw with crafting materials, Bungie have revamped and totally overhauled their crafting system through development, so some of those elements definitely changed. 
But again, the curious thing here, especially since a lot of us would probably argue these leaks appear to have been correct at the time they were published, right? And based on the information we have now, and these leaks going back many, many months, some of them before Witch Queen was even really announced. Yeah, it's absolutely wild that we got this info. But be sure to give us your thoughts down below. There were some additional bits that were really interesting as well, because the leak even referenced us getting a new title called Weapons Master, which was related entirely to weapons, and that turned out to be the Deadeye title. And instead of getting it in Witch Queen, we got it in the 30th anniversary pack. The leak also referenced an Iron Banner rework which had been approved. And we know that that rework is going to happen, as well as a Saladin rework on the Vendor. But it references as well a new title, which according to the leak would be called Iron Lord, and is supposedly going to be a guildable title. And as we also know now, Bungie have teased that they're going to be adding a title to the Iron Banner as part of Season 17. And so potentially some of the things inside of these leaks are things that have yet to even happen now moving towards season 17. So that's why I wanted to make the video, guys. I think it's pretty remarkable that someone was putting this level of information out regarding future content. I would assume that that's a Bungie employee. Otherwise, it would be nearly impossible to get this level of information and accuracy about releases. Other year 5 changes that are actually on the list, and of course may or may not happen, include that apparently Bungie were looking at public LFG and whether that's a possibility for D2. It also lists Eververse gifting, which would certainly be a pretty interesting concept. And then we can see there, adjustments to Sniper Flinch, PC optimization fixes, possibly more Gambit stuff, but we spot other possibilities like a champion overhaul. The leak also makes a suggestion of a possible complete rework for the power leveling system for the game in the future, referencing a world without power. And so it will be interesting to see if Bungie implement any of these things as well. But once again, especially in terms of stuff that hasn't happened yet, we need to take it with a huge grain of salt. Although the historic leaks at least are pretty compelling in terms of how much they got correct. But again, if you have any thoughts about it, let us know down in the comments section. And for today, now that the content has actually been released, I don't think it would do too much harm to talk about the fact that these leaks happened before Witch Queen did. So if you guys have enjoyed this look at those older leaks, be sure to drop us a rating down below and give us your thoughts in the comments section. But another quick mention is for my sponsor over at Now Drinks. And if you guys are looking for tasty and healthy alternatives to energy drinks designed for gamers that help improve focus and memory while playing, then Now Drinks have a bunch of really cool products in their store. So be sure to check them out with the link down below and you can save 20% at checkout when you use code HOUNDISH. However, for today, if you want to stay up to date with more Destiny content in the future, then feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. But otherwise, for now, I appreciate you tuning in and I hope you guys have an awesome day.